Welcome back to Sub-Zero Hero, where the game on your screen pretty much sums up our season. This was the first fixture after the ROPS European qualification game. And it just tells the story. We were good in this game. We dominated the XG. We had more shots than the opposition. More shots on target than the opposition. But look at the player ratings. The players didn't play well. And we ended up losing a game that we should have won 3-0. This is not what you need when the board are already on your case. So after that defeat to Haugesson, we were summoned straight back into the board room. Manager of performance only of a D this time rather than an E, but they weren't happy with that league position. The game against Haugesson had an additional blow to it. Krachev injured, out for the remainder of the season, the board have already sold Jawad, so we have no other left backs at the club. Is there a silver lining amongst any of this? Maybe. We'd entered the transfer market and we'd made a signing. To Bjorn Blindheim is a six foot eight inch target man slash advanced forward with decent pace. And as you would expect for his height, dangerous in the air. Why were we signing this player? Well, this is the first player we've been able to bring back from Tromso, who have stolen him from our youth academy. Now, this guy is a miracle of modern science because he's 16 years old. Tromso stole him three seasons ago when he was 15 years old. He lives a life in inverse dog years. He's the Benjamin Button of Football Manager. We paid a bit of money to bring him back, but after the boarded soldier wild, I was feeling a little bit bruised. So I went and treated myself to a new striker, half a million pounds up front, a million in total. And he had a big part to play because the board had given us just a month to save our job. Let's show you how we got on. So in that month, honestly, we've done okay. It probably looks a little bit worse than it is because a couple of European defeats. Let me explain the strategy there. Straight after the Halgerson game, I made the decision on the spot to sacrifice making any further progress in Europe. I didn't think we'd be able to pick up results against Montpellier and Sevilla anyway. So what I decided to do was just play a completely rotated side in European competition. It meant that we got battered. We were playing the kids. Well, we're always playing the kids. This time we were playing the reserve kids. It meant that they really, really did struggle, but they held out. We were Pretty defensive, pretty dogged, did okay to pick up just a 2-0 loss against Montpellier. And I didn't really care because it meant that we had a fresh starting eleven going into the derby against Tromsø. And we played all right in this game. We could have nicked a winner. It finished nil-nil, but it got us a point, moved us up the table a little bit, set us up nicely for the next game against Volarenga, where we rode our luck a little bit, but this time... We were ruthless. Vullerenga probably should have scored. They were certainly worthy of a point, but we absolutely were rampant in the second half. Larson Plain was hitting the back of the net. Skog van Pedersen made a return to form. We didn't even muster an XG of one, but we got ourselves a 4-1 victory. And then in the next game, do you know what? This performance was superb as well because we put out a pretty scratch team in this game. Lots of the names on here you probably won't recognise. We only had two shots the entire game. Sevilla could have scored a hatful. Pedersen put in a good performance. And we only lost 1-0 to a team that had £50 million players all over the pitch. Some of the players that they were able to throw out there were frighteningly, frighteningly good. And our second choice eleven held them at bay for a long time. The only disappointment during the month, a 3-2 loss to Starbeck. Now, Starbeck are second in the table. They're in a little title chance of their own. They're a few points behind Boda Glimt, and they're a very, very good team. We were 3-0 down in this game, probably undeservedly so. We came back to 3-2 with a couple of very late goals. We had a chance to equalise right at the end again. Although they had more shots, we had good chances. We had the better of the XG. No disgrace going down 3-2 to the team second in the table. But a point there might well have gone a long way to appeasing the board further. 
So did we do enough during that month? I mean, really, we were victims of not really having enough league games in that month. We only had three. A defeat, a draw, and a very good victory against Vullarenga. Was that enough to appease our board? Cast your bets now. So there we have it. Make your own minds up whether this was a just decision or not. We were 12th in the league at the time and the board had had enough. Failure to meet their objectives from the start of the season meant that they dispensed with our services. The heartbreak is that Chairman Eirik Veek was only a couple of weeks away from the next board elections. He could have been ousted. The new guy might have come in, seen everything I've done for the club, offered us a new contract or kept us on. Perhaps as a parting shot by Veek, he's decided to dispense with our services. Now, let me know down in the comments, do you think that this was a fair decision or not? Look, what you've got to realise is the board don't know the game that I was playing. They don't know that I was doing a youth-only save. They set us the objective of reaching the cup quarterfinals, getting a top half finish in the league and reaching the group stages of European competition. We met those achievements in terms of the European competition, qualify for those group stages well. Didn't quite have that top half position in the league. Weren't a million miles off. We're only five points away with six games to go. I'm still confident we could have recovered to mid-table at least. I do feel that the thing that did for us was being knocked out of the cup in the first round much earlier on in the season. It was against a team from two divisions below us. We were a goal up. We threw it away very late on. And I think that that could be one of the key contributing factors to us not keeping our job. If we'd have just met the board's expectations in both of those cup competitions... We might have got away with a slightly subpar performance in the league, but FM21 is ruthless. If you're not meeting those expectations, you are done. And so, after what, just over 13 seasons of combat, we were sacked from our job at Tromstalen. Maybe the thing we should finish on is just having a look at the managerial record that we're going to be leaving behind. So here is our managerial profile. Then you'll see we didn't quite get to finish our coaching qualifications. That's how much Trump Stalin struggled for money that we managed to get through 13 seasons and still not be at the top of the coaching qualification ladder. We're still doing our Continental A license. You'll see we've played just over 400 games with Trump Stalin. We're closing in on 200 wins. I reckon we'd have got that by the end of the season. A win percentage of 48% in a youth-only save? I don't think that's a disgrace. Granted, we conceded an awful lot of goals down here, but we treated the Trump style and faithful to plenty of goals as well. And we've developed a pretty good manager now. We've got level of discipline of 20, man management of 20, motivating of 20. We've got some pretty good coaching attributes as well. So it's taken us a long time, but we started out with no badges and no experience whatsoever. And we've developed a pretty good manager. It says that we favour a Gagan press. Not sure how true that is, by the way. It says that we finally shook off being a 4-4-2 merchant. And we like a 4-3-3 with a DM and some wide players in there. But that is the manager that we are leaving behind. Final thing to check in on. Let's have a look at some of those youngsters who could have gone on and been Sub-Zero heroes. So here's the team that played in the last game. You'll see that Gratchev was out injured for this one. Not sure Gratchev would go on and develop as well as I thought he would when he first came through. You've got to remember, PSG made a bid for this player at one stage, but physically he's not developed into anything special. Going forward, technically he's not superb. Even the mentals, at 17, maybe a couple of them might reach 15 or 16, but a little bit underwhelmed with Gratchev's development, I reckon. Perhaps the player I would have been most excited to carry on developing was Espen Larsen Pleem. I love a quick striker, especially one that can dribble. His off-the-ball movement wasn't as great as you would like, but his teamwork and his work rate meant that he was a, a real presence up there. 
He finished with five league goals, but he also got, sorry, six league goals. He got five in Europe as well. Not a bad debut season for the little man. I think he is going to go on attracting some suitors as he develops. By 20 years old, I think he could be playing at one of the bigger clubs around Europe. The Skogs, well, Skogdal, I think probably Norwegian Premier Division football is more his level. I don't see him ever really getting a chance at a top club. Skogvang Pedersen, on the other hand, I reckon might. He's gone backwards a little bit this season. He was a little bit quicker than that last campaign. Not training anywhere near as well as he was last season, but still only 17. I reckon one of the lower clubs in a top five league could well take a punt on him. Runnigan is going to be returning to Milan at the end of the season. Does he look like a Serie A player to you? Maybe not, but I could certainly see him doing a job at perhaps maybe in Belgium, Holland, a league of that nature. Certainly one of the big Scandinavian clubs. I reckon Runnigan would not be out of his depth. Aside from that, are there any other players that were really going to go on and make it? I don't know whether there were. Burnson had some suitors at one point. I think Milan came in for him at one point. Again, decent-ish player. Good enough for AC Milan, not sure. Ty Sperovic got very upset when Milan came in for him and I turned down their offer. Only 18 years old. Again, never really developed quite as well as you'd like, but... Again, I think at a big Scandinavian club, he could be interesting. The player who you never got to see in action, by the way, is Tabjorn Blindheim. Six foot six, not six foot eight, as I may have said earlier. But I reckon a good chance of developing, maybe not just into a target man, but possibly an advanced forward. If you could just improve his pace a little bit, he's off the ball, he's decent. The finishing and the composure, yes, they need a little bit of work, but given enough time, I reckon he could have been another really good player. So we definitely produce some decent players. Add into that the likes of Bratton, Deuce and Ibsen as well. We set out on this little mission to see whether we could take a team from the bottom of Norwegian football to the top, relying on nothing but our youth intake. We got close to the very top, third place in the Norwegian Premier Division was as high as we were able to finish. I had hopes of maybe being able to grab a cup victory and brand these boys Sub-Zero heroes. I was starting to have serious doubts, if I'm honest, if I was ever going to be able to win the Premier Division title. Whenever Rosenborg had a bad season, Boda Glimt or Vullerenga or Starbeck seemed to step up. Success in Norway all seems to be dependent on how many of your top talents get poached during a particular transfer window. If a team gets ravaged, they tend to have an off year until they can develop their own next batch and somebody else steps up and steals the title. I think at Trompstalem, I was always on a conveyor belt of having to sell the best players or the board doing it for me. I don't think I was ever going to get 11 players of sufficient quality all in the starting lineup at the same time to allow us to win the league, but I did have hopes for the cup. So given the incredible support that this series has had from all of you lot, I'm really tempted to apologise for getting sacked and bringing it all to an end, but I had to check myself. What would I be apologising for? Being sacked for being rubbish at a children's computer game that we all should have given up years ago, in my case, decades ago. I think rather than apologise... I should really be saying thank you because the support that this series has enjoyed has been phenomenal. The amount of people giving me advice and nuggets of information at the end of every episode has been hugely appreciated. The fact that each episode is still getting 400 odd views when we're in the mid 60s for the episode number is incredible. We get more views on these videos than some people who've got five times the number of subscribers that I have got. Your support has been absolutely humbling at times, but this may be the end of the series. It's certainly not the end of FM21 on this channel. We've got an adventure or two left in us. I just need a little bit of time to decide what that next adventure is going to be, and hopefully 
you're going to join me on it. Will it be a youth development one? Perhaps not. I feel after eight months without making a signing that I really would like to try a different style of save. However, what you can guarantee is that we will make it a challenge. Rebuilding Barcelona, not the kind of thing that I really enjoy. So we're going to go and have a little hunt, a little think, find the next FM21 adventure. And we might be back sooner than you might imagine.